All right, constraint satisfaction problems. CSP is what we are studying today. CSP is the core field within artificial intelligence AI class. Okay, what's a CSP? CSP is a very simply defined problem. You're given n variables, x1 through xn, and their values can be within the domain like d1 through dk. And then you're given a set of constraints. What we need to do is to find matching domain values such that the given constraints are satisfied. It's a very simple, special subset of search. Search, what we have already covered earlier, uninformed search, informed search, DFS, BFS, IDDFS, etc. In the when, we, when formulated as a search problem, we can say that the goal test is a set of constraints specifying allowable combinations of values for those variables. Okay, So essentially, we're given these variables, we're given these values, these possible values, just assign a value to each variable such that your constraints are specified. Considering that these are special case of search problems, one question is why do we need to study them at all? Why don't we just use the search problems corresponding search algorithms? The main reason we study CSPs are that they're very common. So our interest is in some improvements to those search algorithms that can help us solve CSPs compared to just using the standard search algorithms. That's the whole reason we dedicate an entire lecture just to studying the CSPs. Okay. There are many, many, many examples of CSPs. They come up very frequently in our, in our common life. For example, a coloring problem, a scheduling assignment problem, a transportation problem. You can imagine that you have to move some goods from a certain factories. Which trucks do you assign to which factories? All of those assignment problems, timetabling problems can be considered variations of CSP problem. You can also go into hardware configuration, circuit layout, and there are many variants of CSPs there as well. So in general, we're going to study CSPs because they're very common, and we can use come up with some improvements to our regular search algorithms that can help us solve CSPs faster. Let's take a couple of examples. The very first problem, the easiest one to see, is a graph coloring problem. We are given a graph all these vertices, these edges, variables are V1 through Vn, colors are 1 through K, and we have to make sure that every vertex receives a color, and the adjacent vertices do not receive the same color. We can, of course, consider a graph coloring outside of AI as well, and it's a standard problem within computer science, but it is also serves as a very useful example of constraint satisfaction problems. Here's another very classic AI problem of n queens. We are given the n by n chessboard, and we have to place n queens on the chessboard somewhere so that the queens are not attacking each other. So in this case, the constraint is a little bit differently defined. In the previous case, the constraint was defined as that two vertices do not have the same color. In this case, the constraints are defined such that the queens don't attack each other. That means they're not on the same same uh, row, same column, as well as not on the same diagonal. Whether the major diagonal, minor di diagonal, long diagonal, short diagonal, doesn't matter. The queens are not, uh, not threatening to each other. So when we try to write these variables, we can write these variables a few different ways. For example, we can say QK is the variable corresponding to the queen in the kth row. And the variable itself can be 1 through n. The values can be 1 through n, corresponding to which column do you place that in. And then you can have constraints such that you can write them in an implicit way. And you can write that i q i is not equal to qj because they cannot be in the same column. Similarly, you can do the math for the, for the diagonals. And that's the way that you can write these constraints. You can also write them explicitly here. But that would take too much memory and this is only used as an example here. So to repeat, CSPs can be considered a special case of search and default algorithms like DFS, BFS can be used. They are still applicable. But some general improvements can be very helpful. So let's go into it. So there are four main things to learn about CSPs. We will cover that in a, se in a sequence of videos here. The first one is the basics and definitions. This is kind of what we're doing right now. After that, we will study how to improve CSP search algorithms using heuristics. And then we will use 
something like constraint propagation in which we can reason about the values that can apply to certain domain variables. And then we will also try to understand how we can use the constraint graphs, constraints to simplify our problem further. Those are the four main things that we should make sure we learn about CSPs and the videos are broken down accordingly. So let's talk a little bit about modeling the constraints. The constraints can be articulated using a constraint graph. They can be drawn using two different ways. One way is, the easier way perhaps, is to draw variables only and draw a line between them so that the graph is easy to see. I'll give you an example. Another way is that you draw variables as a circle node and draw a special rectangle nodes that serve as constraints. And this is a little bit more complicated, but it is also more general because they can model more kinds of constraints. Let's take via an example. If we want to just have a constraint graph, which is drawn using variables only, here's an example, similar to a graph coloring problem. We can say these are all the variables. These are all the constraints. So these two variables have a constraint have a constraint in between them that they cannot have the same value. And this particular variable has no constraint. So in this case, this kind of constraint graph is fine because the constraints are only binary. They only involve two variables. But some CSPs may not be easily met using a similar kind of constraint here. They might have constraints that are more general. Let's take an example of that. Here's a crypto arithmetic problem. So we have given these variables like, we are given this crypto arithmetic problem like two plus two is equal to four. And in this kind of problem, we are told that T and W and O stand for some digits and they are not all the same such that this works out. So O plus O is equal to R. Possibly there's a carryover here, uh, X1, X2 and X3. So that's why we say that O plus O is equal to R plus 10 times x1. For example, if O was 7 and R was 4, then 7 plus 7 is equal to R plus uh, 4 plus 10. So 1 is the carry there. So this is how we can write these kind of constraints. And in this case, because you have a special constraint that all of these are different, we draw a special rectangular node here, square node here, which models a multi variable constraint. In this case, this constraint spans six different variables. If we did not do that, we would have to cross, we have to, we would have to make six choose two constraints and connect all of them with each other. F has a constraint with T, etc, etc. And while we could still do that, it would become even harder for, com for coming up with a constraint for O, R and X. Remember, this is a constraint for O, R and X. And that's what this particular constraint node shows. So let me summarize this part here. Constraint graph is to articulate the constraints and constraint graphs can be drawn in two different ways. This is one way. This is perhaps easy to see. The only kinds of nodes are the nodes for the variables and you can only model binary constraints. This is a more general kind of constraint graph in which the variables are written by, cir by circles. The constraints are drawn by squares and the constraints are connected to the variables over which they span. For example, this constraint spans X3, X2, T and O. This corresponds to this one here, T and O. So T and T plus T is equal to O plus X3 so that's why we have T and O and X3, there's a constraint between them. There's also X2 because X2 is the carryover here. So this constraint involves X2 as well. So that's why you can see that this kind of constraint graph, even though it's more complicated, is more general. And if this is what you have to do, then this is what you have to do. If your problem is simple and you can draw a constraint graph like this, of course, then you'll choose the easier way. Draw it like this because your constraints are binary constraints or they can be written as binary constraints here. So hopefully that part is clear why we draw the constraint graphs two different ways and they both are useful.
here's another example sudoku and in this case certainly making uh, making the first kind of constraint graph binary constraint graph would be too complicated because you have nine variables you would always be writing nine nine choose two that is 36 constraints for each row each column each mini square versus here you can write them as nine constraints for for the for the mini squares nine for columns nine for rows and this is perhaps a little bit easier way to do nine way all day for each column each row and each mini square here or we can have the the pairwise one which would be too many 36 times 3 to be precise so there are a few varieties of csps here most commonly we come across discrete variables with finite domain kind of the coloring problem that we talked about but sometimes uh, sometimes you can also have discrete variables with infinite domain this should say infinite in which case you have many 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 more domain values and sometimes your variables themselves are continuous you can discretize them perhaps but many times the variables themselves are continuous so those are the few different var varieties of csps many times we will focus on discrete variables discrete domains here Varieties of constraints can also be sometimes like just having having a single variable saying x1 cannot be equal to 3. Well, that's just kind of like changing the domain because there's a domain value associated with each variable. So x1 is not equal to 3. So that means 3 is not in a possible domain of x1. They can also be binary constraints as we have already seen. x1 is not equal to x2 like those two variables that are connected the nodes that are connected cannot receive the same color or they can be more than three or more as we saw in the crypto arithmetic and column constraints as well so you've already seen those kinds of constraints and this just formalizes that learning that we already had so that's all we have for today in this particular lecture we talked about the csps but we really focused ourselves on the basics and definition and formulating them as a search problem by using those variables and domain values. In the coming videos, we will talk about these three, uh, these three rest of the learning objectives within CSPs. So watch out for those videos as well. You can find a link right, right here.